All right, so like normal, you know, anytime somebody throws cybersecurity in the title and everybody kind of leaves, mass exodus. So uh, I promise I won't bore you uh, with, with cybersecurity babble. Um, I'm actually going to tell you about some important things that a lot of dealerships are going to have to decide on um, in this coming year. Let's see if this works. So I am Carl Falk. I'm the CEO of a company called BotDoc. And uh, obviously, I'm not Robert Johnston. So Robert is actually sick. Uh, he said he had COVID. Uh, I, I asked for proof, and I never got anything. So he's not here. Uh, but Robert and I usually tag team on a lot of presentations, uh, a lot of times in the banking, lending, insurance, the advisory space, even healthcare. Uh, Robert's background, he's actually on MSNBC quite a bit um, when there's a cyber attack. So I'd say that most of you probably just came to see me um, here today. But uh, so Robert couldn't make it. Myself, uh, I do have a, a government background, so uh, some obviously some uh, connections to cybersecurity. So today, um, there's, there's a challenge that everyone is, uh, is looking at, uh, and that's the balance of cybersecurity, because I can tell all of you today, anytime you work with your bank, you have to log into secure email or things like that, um, nobody's really happy about that. It's actually making things harder. So we're going to kind of talk about how technology can actually be used to make things better. So I'm, I am going to make a plug for Adlumen, uh, since uh, Robert's not here. But uh, basically, his company, they'll put a perimeter around. Um, they do work with a lot of SMBs. Kind of think about putting a perimeter moat around your company and protecting it from cyber attacks. So that's what they do in a lot of different industries. So I'm going to hit a couple of his slides. He coached me through them. But uh, one thing we wanted to talk about today is what kind of the top threats for any SMB. So on the x-axis, we have the frequency of the attacks. And on the y-axis is really the impact. So you've got patch management. That's like, hey, you know, uh, the big software companies pushing patches to your computers. So if those aren't updated, um, uh, smart hackers can get in through your computer. Phishing attacks through email, business account compromise, and obviously insider threats. And then ransomware. Um, the interesting thing about ransomware is Almost over 90% of the time, when a ransomware attack happens, it's because one of the other things happened as well, in tandem. So a lot of companies are looking at how do we reduce the easier ones, patch management, phishing, um, locking down business accounts, and looking at in, in potential insider threats. And I know in automotive, um, a lot of sales staff turn over quite a bit. So I know that's always a challenge. So you've got to kind of think about this in a different perspective. But at the end of the day, we don't want a ransomware attack. So by limiting the other issues and checking those boxes, we can actually reduce that. So why don't we want a ransomware attack? So nationally, for companies of all sizes, the average cost of a single ransomware uh, attack is about a, nine, a Porsche 911 GT3 short of $2 million. Sorry, I'm trying to bring in some, some automotive humor there. So a little, just a shy under $2 million. That's the impact of the ransomware, the cleanup, and everything has to be done afterwards. So I don't think anybody here wants to write a $2 million check to clean up a mess. But here's an interesting statistic, and that's the next one. So by 2025, the industry is expecting that cybercrime will cost the entire world $10.5 trillion. That's a lot of money. There's another crime that's actually less than this. Does anybody have an idea what's actually cost less than this? Illegal drug trade. So cybercrime is now more profitable than all the illegal drug trade combined across the globe. That's a massive number. I'll tell you what, if I was a Cuban drug lord, I'd be diversified into cybersecurity. The margins are a lot better, right? And, and uh, you're, you're getting you know, hit with less guns, right? So here's the interesting piece. So of all data breaches, 70% are from outsiders, which means 30% are from internal, potentially, employees. So that's always a potential issue. But of all attacks, 50, only 55% are organized crime. So that means 45% are coming from what you guys would think is some kid in his garage or in his basement, 
right? They're coming from non-organized uh, uh, environments, but only 1% are actually coming from partners. You know, there's a lot of times we talk about vendor risk, vendor issues, stuff like that. Only 1% 1, 1 actually come from that environment. But here's what I want you to remember is this last bullet here is that looking at last year's statistics, a ransomware attack happened in a, in a business falls victim to a ransomware attack every 40 seconds. Every 40 seconds. So that's a lot. So um, at the end of the day, you guys are in a new world. Uh, automotive has never really been regulated, like banking, lending, insurance, those other industries. So you're kind of at this ground floor. And the FTC, with the new Safeguards Act, is basically saying, hey, we're going to have to change things. right? We're going to have to protect things a little bit different. And the reason, a lot of people think, oh, the FTC is doing it because they're just being evil and mean. Well, maybe that's true. But they're doing it because they see what's happening on the other side. And that's all those impacts that we just talked about. Like, this is a real, we are fighting a battle that nobody can actually see. So this is the challenge. So what I'm going to tell you as far as Robert's slides, and if he was here, he might go into a little more detail. I'll tell you is that the FTC safeguards rules that you have to follow are legit. And it's for a reason. So uh, I'm going to switch over to BotDoc real quick. So what we are, so we, we are a technology that's being a, that has been adopted for years in the banking, lending, insurance, advisory space, even healthcare to reduce cyber risk, but also make it easier. Okay, so we're, we're actually, you'll, you'll, you'll notice some of these logos. So um, Edward Jones, a big client of ours, will use uh, somebody that's here as well, Ally, and in fact, it was just released. Um, we actually had to switch out our slides at the last minute. So there is an integration of BotDoc inside of CDK Global um, that, is, that is coming soon, so we're excited about that. But we are a technology that allows companies to transport documents and data with end-to-end -end encryption, but without pins, passwords, logins, accounts, apps, or software to download, the painful things that, uh, that nobody likes. So I want to tell you something today that nobody's talking about. And in fact, every time I have the conversation, I usually get big, round eyeballs. And this is cybersecurity companies. This is dealerships and everybody in this space. These are the 16 points of the FTC safeguards rule, right? You guys have been on webinars, you've seen this, you're hiring companies that are telling you here's all this stuff, but there's one item that nobody is talking about. And this is one of the biggest access points that you'll have risk with that, you're, that is a potentially fine. And that's the fact that every piece of data that is sensitive has to be encrypted between your customer and your dealership. Nobody is talking about this issue. Because at the end of the day, congratulations, all of you are now banks in the eyes of the FTC. That sucks, right? But there's a reason. It's because of what's happening in the, in the background. So I want to talk about this specific issue. Because what is the number one tool your sales staff uses to communicate with your customer? Here you go. This thing, the phone. Yeah. And is it a corporate phone or a personal device? Yeah, it's personal, right? You guys aren't buying phones for them. And what's the number one tool on the phone that's used to communicate, hey, I need your driver's license. Hey, we're going to get the deal closed. Do I need your W-2 or your birth certificate? What is it? Text. Yeah, text. An unsecured email. Texting is not secure, right? But everybody does it. Anybody know how many copies there are when, if I were to text one of you a picture, doesn't have to be just a normal picture, how many copies are littered around the internet for that one text message? A minimum of 13 copies, all unsecured. Between your phone, the cloud, AT&T servers, T-Mobile servers, downloaded on the phone, the text history, then I have to email it to myself on my work computer, the download to put it into the CRM, minimum of 13 copies. This is a big issue. So are you guys going to break the culture? That's the question. Are you going to break the culture of your sales staff and force them to use stuff that banks use? 
or is there a different way? All right. So all this stuff, so let's talk about it. Test drives, somebody says, hey, I wanna come in for a test drive. Great, need your driver's license, proof of insurance. Or you show up at the dealership and what does the salesperson do? Yeah, let me just take a picture of that and I'll put it in the CRM later. Happens at almost every dealership. I would venture to say every dealership. Okay, so is that necessarily bad? Well, from a customer experience standpoint, no, it's not bad, because that's really easy for them. Is it bad for the FTC and for you? Yeah, absolutely. That's a violation in June. Not today, but in June, All right? Same thing with qualifying. Hey, hey man, I think we can get the deal done. Just need a W-2 from you. Can you text it to me? Yeah, let me do that. All right, that's a problem. And now you've got stuff. What's, what's your average turnover rate for your salespeople? I mean, the industry standard is like 60, 70% turnover in a year for sales staff. So now you got a guy that was employed by you running around with a bunch of driver's license, W-2s, pay stubs on his personal phone. Now you may say, hey, I don't care. He's not my employee anymore. But those things were added when he was your employee. These are the things the FTC is going to look at. Same thing with service, right? Loaner cars, hey, I need your driver's license, proof of insurance. Let's get you that loaner car. Right, so how are these things being handled? I actually want you guys to think about this because this is, a, this is why the FTC is doing this. Because they know that this industry has not been regulated and there's some, some significant challenges. So I want you to think about how do your sales staff grab IDs, proof of insurance, financial information, how do they communicate with their salespeople? Because I will tell you, and I will tell this to every software provider in here, a lot of people say, well, I can text an email out of my CRMs. Is that encrypted? No. When it's in there, I hope it is, but the means that you got it from, to and from your, your, uh, your customer is not encrypted because they're sending it through unsecured channels through the phone carriers, and it's not, it's not secured. This is where the hackers are getting information. These, these, this is the lowest hanging fruit for them. This is why the FTC is getting involved. So you guys, as dealerships, you have to sit back and say, I don't want to be fined. So what do banks do? So this is the world that we live in. So we ask, a lot of companies ask this question a lot. If you're a bank, this is the things that you use that are secure with your customers are gonna fall into one of three buckets. Either portals, storage, or apps, secure FTP sites, or fax. God bless fax, but man, who has fax anymore, right? And then secure email. Has anybody honestly ever worked with their bank and when they sent you a secure email thought, oh, thank God they sent me a secure email. This is gonna be so much fun. No, it sucks. So all these things suck, but this is what your banks use. Are you as dealerships gonna say, hey, let's just start using this stuff with our customers. Is your, is your customer base that goes to five different dealerships on a Saturday going to have to log into five different systems, download five different apps? That's not a good experience. But these are the questions that you're gonna be faced with. So we kind of look at like, like a child seesaw one side being security and the other side being convenience. And as you drive up security, and this, these, are little, these are things that you really have to think about because at the end of the day, customer experience for you guys is crucial. If you make it easier for your customer to buy the car, they're gonna buy the car. And if it sucks and it's horrible and they don't like you, they're gonna go buy it somewhere else. So as you guys look at security and the FTC safeguards rule and you guys get consultants to come in and, and fractional CISOs and say, yeah, we're going to lock things down and we're, you, know, you want zero risk and zero exposure. It's kind of like listening to your lawyer, right? If, if we listen to our lawyers all the time, sorry, I got a lawyer joke. Um, you know, I probably would never drive. I'd probably never start a business, wouldn't ride a bike. You know, uh, I, I, my lawyer actually told me this joke, so it's, so it's okay to tell. He said, lawyers are like condiments. Right, so they're like, so you can put a little bit of salt on your steak, it makes it better. But if you pour the, uh, the whole bottle of salt on the steak, it ruins it, right? So use them sparingly. 
So the point here is, is that as we, as we look to increase security in this, in this industry, the customer convenience factor is going to go down. It's a guarantee because this is the battle that every bank in America is fighting right now. This is what you guys are stepping into. So when it's, when it's bad, you're going to lose customers. And in, in the banking world, we see this all the time. The COOs of, of banks say, gosh, darn it, the CIO, if you make it any harder to do business, we're not going to have any customers to do business with. Right? So what happens? What would a good customer service person in banking do that somebody's really frustrated and pissed off? Oh, you know what? Just text it to me. Just email it to me. I know you're locked out. I, I'm not the IT person. You know, I just want to get the deal done. So what's going to happen in automotive is you guys put more and more security into your worlds. I guarantee you this is going to happen because it happens in every other industry we're in, even healthcare. Operations, good operators, good salespeople will always find unsecured technical workarounds to make it easier when the customer's frustrated, but you give in to risk. But we don't want risk. <laughs> so what the heck do we do? Right? How do we break this relationship? This industry has to figure that out. So there's two tips. You have to educate your staff on why it's bad to send text messages on secured email. Use some of those statistics up front, right? Cuban drug lords investing all their money in cybercrime, right? The fact that when you text uh, a single picture, upwards of 15 copies of that litter around the internet. It got me started thinking about stuff that I'm sending. So the other one is you guys, you guys have more power than you think, or maybe you do realize how much power you have. With your software providers, you need to demand that you need security, but you need stuff that's actually going to be easier for your customers to use. So this, this industry, let me go back. So this industry right now has to make a decision. And I don't know what decision it's going to make. Either the dealership world, the world of dealership and automotive, has to break the culture that's been in place for years, which is this, for decades. That's been the culture. And say, no more. And everybody is going to use logins. Every customer is going to have to have a login to visit our dealership. Um, we're going to have to use secure email. Or the industry has to make a decision that says, no, we're going to look at ways to leverage technology to bring it to where the culture is. That's the decision this industry has to make. I don't know which way it's going to go. I would rather see a better customer experience in reducing risk and making things more secure. And I think you guys would as well. And how much time do we have? All right. So that's, that's the challenge. But this is the demands you guys have to make to your software providers. So I want to give you a vision of the future. And this is a little plug. Because there's a reason why we have started working with some of your partners. We're, and I'll be honest, we're new to automotive because we've been in all these other regulated industries for a long time, and we've seen a lot. So if you want to get a vision of the future of what your dealership experience could look like, you can scan this QR code. I promise I'm not going to track you or break into your phone or anything like that. Um, it's basically going to take you through a little automated demo. This technology is actually being implemented at some dealerships today. Actually, ov uh, over 100 dealerships today have already started working with this. Not necessarily the QR code, but the ability for their sales staff through autocorrects on their keyboards to drop in sessions like this very easily to grab sensitive items from consumers. All end-to-end -end encrypted, but allowing them to continue using text. And in fact, all of you who are dealerships, I assume you have some staff that are in their 20s, mid-20s-ish. Where do they live on a daily basis? It, digitally. Where do they live? What are they on? Well, I'll tell you, my son, who's a freshman in college, I can't even get him to text me sometimes. So what are they on, right? Social media. Instagram, Snapchat. 
Nah, not even, m many are on Twitter anymore, right? So that's where they live. So imagine telling your sales staff, hey, with this technology, you can actually go and drop in sessions on Twitter DMs, Instagram DMs, and Snapchat. We have actually have dealerships that have come back and said, can we do this? And we're like, yeah, absolutely. That's where they live. That's where they can sell cars. So the question is, is this industry going to adopt what the banks have done? Or are they going to say there's a better way to leverage secure technology where the culture lives today? And that's the real question that the industry has to ask. So anyway, I think that's the last slide. All right, thanks for coming today, battling through this, but I wanted you, to, you guys to know because this is, this is the issue that nobody is addressing. And if you're getting advisors, you're getting consultants that are helping you through this, that's great. You need to ask them, how do I fix the end-to-end -end encryption piece between my customer and my sales staff and my F&I staff? and they need to have an answer for you. All right, any questions? No? All right. Well, thank you guys for having us. Thank you once again to Carl. Some great information there. Uh, really, uh, I think a, a good idea to really look into and check out.